Welcome back inside Studio 12. Will Johnson and Matt Simon with you on this afternoon. And uh, we gladly bring in wide receivers coach David Beatty with our football program. And he also has recruiting coordinator to his title. And that's actually pretty significant this week. Wednesday was National Signing Day. The Aggies, our football program, brought in 22 of them. And it was good enough to rank in the top five in the country in this class. The momentum with this football team, Coach Beatty, it just continues to, to stockpile, and we saw it rear its head again with, with another great recruiting class. Yeah, you know, we were very fortunate to uh, sign 22 young men that are not only really good football players, but but great young men too. And, uh, you know, I talked about it the other day. You know, Coach Sumlin certainly has a standard uh, by which – uh, he sets the type of kids that we go after, and it, it's simply not just to be good athletes, but there's got to be a combination there of kids that have good character as well. So uh, we're very excited about the group that we've signed because of the fact that they can bring a lot of ability to our team, uh, but they're also going to bring good character to our football team, which is something that uh, Coach, Coach Sumlin puts a, a lot of stock into. So excited about that group. Something I heard on Wednesday is that – the brand of A&M is growing because I didn't think about it going into signing day, but you go to Arizona and you get the top quarterback in the country and possibly the best defensive player in that state as well. You get the top junior college player in the country from Pennsylvania. Are you starting to see that the Aggies have capabilities in recruiting nationally, not just in the great state of Texas? Absolutely. And, you know, that's something that uh, obviously we're excited about. Um, you know, I heard Coach Price talk about it yesterday. Uh, you know, we're on planes and trains, and we're all over the place throughout this this great country. And literally everywhere you go, uh, our brand is all over the place right now. And and it's 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 a really good time to be a Texas A&M. Uh, I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, none of which more important than our head coach Kevin Sumlin and what he stands for and what he's been able to do uh, with our program. Uh, since he's gotten here and, and the type of kids that we've been able to bring in and then the, the, the production that we've had on the field with the players that have helped elevate this program uh, to a point where it is now. Uh, certainly Johnny Manziel, uh, you know, is, is a guy that has done some wonderful things for us here. And, and uh, you know, personally, uh, you know, I just I'm, – I'm biased, but, you know, he's one of the best players I've ever been around in my, in my tenure. And, uh, you know, he's obviously helped catapult us into the national prominence, national spotlight, along with the other guys. It's not just him. It's Mike Evans. It's uh, it, it's all those linemen. It's it's Luke Jokel. It's Mike Matthews. It's Jake Matthews. It's yeah. Cedric Obuehe. I mean, it's Jarvis Harrison. I mean, it's it's a number of different guys. Sean Porter. You know, it's, it's uh, Demontre Moore. I mean, those guys have all played a big role in helping us get that brand to where it is today. Let me ask you this, Coach, on a personal level. You know, I think fans may sometimes just hear about a kid's name a week or two before signing day. You guys foster relationships for sometimes years as you try to get these kids. What does signing day mean to you personally when you actually you know, you get that big step comes, the kid is now officially going to Texas A&M? Uh, well, it, it's, it, it certainly is very stressful going into that day, but what a lot of people don't realize is some of those relationships have been – they've been built over three years, so – for me, as much as I've been in it for a long time and I know not to get this way, it becomes very personal. Uh, you know, I find myself having to take a step back on signing day if a kid doesn't choose the school that I'm at or a kid does choose the school that, that, that I'm, I'm recruiting him at. Uh, it's very difficult to part with that young man when you've been developing a relationship with him. You know, in particular, one kid in this class, it was three and a half years I've known this young man that we've, you know, we've been talking with him and his parents. So uh, it is something that uh, it's a really good question because people don't realize this doesn't just happen overnight. Mm -hmm. it, it starts way back sometimes when they're, you know, Nick Harvey. I mean, I first saw him in, in spring ball when he was a freshman. And I remember asking Chris Gilbert, you know, at that practice because I look up and this guy's intercepting passes. He's knocking people out. They put him at quarterback. Nobody can tackle him. He's running 60 yards for a <laughs> touchdown. And he, he's just a little bitty old too because he was 14 years old, 15 years old. And, <laughs> and I remember asking Chris who that is. He said, man, that's Nick Harvey. He's like, man, that's going to be the best player in the country when he gets to be a senior. And uh, from that point forward, you know, we started to foster and develop, uh, developing a relationship between me and Nick. And a lot of guys have that same relationship, I know. But uh, it's started a long time ago 
And if we start to get into some of the guys, I think about one in particular that you will coach. State of Louisiana and the city of New Orleans have produced some great athletes in the past. Matt Simon not included no. on that list at all. But <laughs> I didn't get Matt. my NLI. Right. I didn't get it. Well, <laughs> rightfully so. But <laughs> Speedy, uh, Speedy Noyle from Edna Carr High School. When I watched the highlight video of him, it was almost comical because he was lining up as a quarterback. Didn't throw any passes. I mean, just shot right by people <laughs> running the football, appropriately named Speedy. And my goodness, what an athlete you're getting. In. And he will play wide receiver here at Texas. Absolutely. How about that name, Speedy? Does yeah. that fit or what? <laughs> Devontae's uh, the real first. So <laughs> <yeah. you> <laughs> he, uh, you know, Speedy, uh, he's one of those guys that it's not real hard to tell. You turn on that tape and you see the first clip and, and you realize that's different than some of the other things that you've seen. And then you play the second clip and you realize that's different as well. And then you get to clip three and four, and really you could turn it off at that point because he's just different than some of the other guys that you're looking at. They separate themselves. And he is a, certainly a, an outstanding talent, but his burst is one of the greatest bursts I've seen since I've been recruiting uh, college football players. He's got a great burst. He's got a, a great uh, skill set. He's he's very strong. Uh, he's not a little guy. People think Speedy's a little guy. I mean, this kid's 5'11", almost six foot tall, and he, he's 195 pounds today. I just saw him. And, you know, he's a big, good-looking kid. Uh, and and uh, he's strong. He's fast. And uh, in addition to that, Speedy is a great young man. I mean, getting to spend some time with him over the last couple of weeks on campus now as opposed to just in recruiting. Man, what a fine character kid. Uh, he's just a kid that you want to be around, which, you know, it's always a bonus when you got a great player and he's that type of young man. David Beatty, our wide receivers coach, recruiting coordinator with us here on Studio 12. And one thing I want to ask you about is something Coach mentioned yesterday in the press conference. He talked about – the recruits essentially recruiting each other, helping recruit. Because mm -hmm. these classes, as they start to form, they really start to, especially your really hard commits, they really start to bond, don't they? How much have you seen that come into play as you start to assemble a class? Well, I, I think that's actually growing, uh, a growing trend. Uh, you know, it's happening more so now than – than what I can remember 10 years ago or even five years ago. Uh, these kids now, because they're bonded together by uh, these camps that they go to, these these all-star games that they go to, these, uh, these events that they go to, because they are recognized as top players in their area, their state, or even in the country, uh, they start being thrown together a lot, and they start developing those relationships, and, and they talk to one another about what they've learned about this school, what they've learned about that school, and – I, I believe it's starting to become a, a growing trend that guys, they, they, they want to go to places where they, they're familiar with the guys they're going to be playing with. And then finally, the final part in that is, you know, kids want to win championships. And they realize the, the more great players they can put around them, the better chance they have of doing that. So uh, I think it's a trend that you'll continue, continue to see grow, particularly with the more uh, – uh, all-star games that are coming out, all these events that are coming out, and the, you know, like the, the opening and the, the, all the things that are happening with throwing these great athletes together, those relationships are forming where they used to not happen. I mean, mm -hmm. when you and I were growing up, they didn't have any of that. The Texas no. High School <laughs> Coaches Association all-star game was really the only all-star game right. in Texas mm -hmm. and the Oil Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I mean, those kids didn't get together. I mean, you saw each other on Friday night, and you were mad at each other. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, the game has changed a lot in a lot of ways. As if we think about recruiting, social media is different. You, you guys over there in the Bright Complex, you tell your football players, look, if you tweet, people are going to know about it. It's going to hit boards immediately. I mean, it's the same for these teenagers, these high school recruits. If they send out a tweet that says to some other recruit, "Hey, come to A and M," I mean, people are all over it. They're under some pressure, but how has social media and the coverage of recruiting nationwide changed the game for you and this staff over in the Bright Complex? Well, I think it's changed the game, the landscape of college football recruiting, period, uh, just because of the amount of information that's available to you uh, at any, any given moment. It's really difficult to – turn your phone on and and not go to Twitter and find out something new mm -hmm. about one of the kids you might be recruiting or a kid that you weren't recruiting that now you you start discovering that mm -hmm. you didn't know about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, that's something that has really changed the game for us. I think it's hard to hide guys 
that used like it used to be back in the old days where if you got off the beaten path and you went to a Silsby or you went to Salina or you went just off the major arteries and cities uh, and you went out there and did some digging, you know, you might be able to find a gym because people weren't going out there to find them. Now that's becoming even more difficult because even kids in 1A and six-man uh, schools are now being uh, discovered because of the age of social media and, and just you know, technology period is out there. So it, it's helping those kids be discovered. But for us, it's it's limiting that ability to hide guys in that regard. You mentioned Silsby yeah, well, there. I once lived in uh-huh. Silsby. I thought maybe in the past somebody was looking for me. Yeah, but then he said, <laughs> yeah. then he said, Jim, and we knew it wasn't. Yeah, you. yeah. Was, you said Silsby. I've long left Silsby. <laughs> I've been out of there for quite some time. Man, but you guys pick on each other <laughs> an awful yeah. lot. Y'all, y'all sound like our we office. wouldn't have a show if we could only compliment each other. That wouldn't even work. But, but also the coverage. Yesterday we see ESPNU on our campus. They're on several others. It's 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 the hat contest on on who's going where the coverage is really blown up and is that a good or a bad thing well you know i'm not sure that that's for me to say uh, i'll say this that that's where the trend is going uh with the with the improvements of uh technology and social media um you know i can have a feeling one way or another but really in my opinion i've either got to adapt to it or it's going to run me over and I'm and I'm going to fall behind right. in in this in this uh, this race of, of college recruiting. So uh, you know, obviously, it's there's some things that I maybe I wish they didn't occur that way. But at the end of the day, I don't control that. So mm-hmm. I have to learn to adapt to the changes in in technology and the the changes in social media. Because if I don't, quite honestly, I'm going to be left behind. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, for from us as a coaching staff, we we're fortunate to work for a head coach that that is technologically up to the up to times. I mean, he understands and knows the value of that, and we all stay up to date on what's going on with that. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things out there that are, that are going on now that, uh, you know, I just – I hope that, that, that uh, high schools and colleges will do a, a better job or really increase awareness of, of the fact that what you say is now being viewed by the world. You're not mm-hmm. talking to your buddies. Mm-hmm. You're not just talking to a select group of people. And what you say, whether you mean it or not, once it's once it's out there, it's hard to take back. Mm-hmm. So uh, I would hope that we can educate our young people on that and, and, and help protect them in that way. Mm-hmm. You mentioned a little bit at the Open about the hard work of Coach Sumlin and how much work, you know, the credit for the class. Brag a little bit on you guys as a whole, the staff, your assistant coach, your fellow assistant coaches, the guys behind the scenes upstairs, the Scott Johnsons, Michael Grosses, Lance, all those guys that put a lot of work in there. Signing day is such a special day because it it's all that hard work that comes to fruition, doesn't it? Absolutely. You know, people see uh, the coaches that are out there on the front line, and 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 they are obviously the keys to to. Uh, being able to secure commitments. But what they don't see is they don't see the Lance Kaufmans and the Michael Agrostas in the back in the film room going through literally thousands of players and letting us know if we need to spend a lot of time looking at that kid or not. Uh, and then, obviously, you know, we've got Emily Jane Cohen, who uh, is – is just paramount to our success, particularly when when student athletes and their parents come to our campus, and she spends a lot of times with those with the moms and the grandmothers, and 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 that's a link that we absolutely need, and she does a great job for us in that regard. Uh, you know, all of our secretaries, the ladies that work in our office, they play play a huge role in the success of us signing these kids. So it's not just the coaches, but but you did mention some of the guys that are on our staff, and and I'll tell you, I, I am. I, I am so excited about our staff because we've got a staff full of guys that are really hungry go-getters when it comes to recruiting. Terry Price, I mean, people know what a great player he was here and what a great D-line coach he is. A lot of people don't know how funny he is. He's one of the funniest guys you'll ever meet in your life. <laughs> we can attest to that. Man, yeah. <laughs> he is he is just hilarious. I love that guy. Uh, he makes your day better when he's around. But they don't understand what a tireless worker he is in recruiting and how good he is at what he does. He's one of the best in the country. He does a really good job. Jeff Banks, a uh, new guy who had been at UTEP for a number of years. And I knew about him because he's been a friend of mine. Coach Sumlin obviously knew about him. Um, and you knew what a talent this guy was because the type of kids he was getting to go out to El Paso to go to UTEP and the people that he was beating on kids. Uh, this guy's really good. Kyle Allen is here. 
we got our start with Kyle Allen because of Coach Banks' relationship with his coaches and the people out there in that area of the world. Uh, you know, uh, Terry Joseph, unbelievable recruiter. One of the guys – I met him uh, a number of years back. I was interviewing for a job with uh, Coach Dooley at, at La Tech, and he let me visit with, with Terry, who was there as his recruiting coordinator at that time. Mm -hmm. And, man, I remember back then going, man, this guy's sharp. I mean, he's going to mm -hmm. be somebody. And, mm -hmm. and, man, he does a tremendous job. Uh, Jake Spavital, he's not just an offensive guru. This guy is a great recruiter, <laughs> does a tremendous job of developing relationships with kids, coaches. I mean, there's not a person that Jake doesn't know. I mean, he's got such a, a broad network of people in the profession, in the media. Uh, he's just a likable guy. He's a person that you always want to be around. I think those are key components to being a good recruiter. You know, kids want to be around who they like to be around. Uh, you know, there's just – there's so many guys. B.J. Anderson does a – Great mm -hmm. job in East Texas with those those coaches out there. We're getting a number of kids from that area. And I think when it comes down to it, we're talking about relationships. Yeah. We're talking about relationships with coaches that get you in the door. And then it comes down to, I think, personality and the ability to uh, to, to sell your school. And, and our guys can do that. And I'm really excited about the staff that we put together. Mark Hagan, another one, does an unbelievable job. Uh, people don't talk about that guy enough. I mean, he is a hard-working dude, does a mm -hmm. great job for us. Uh, just, I mean, the list goes on and on. I hope I'm not missing somebody, but they're they're all really good, at, and uh, and I'm excited to be on the staff with them. Last thing before you go, signing day is over. At the end of the month, we start spring football. What will the next three weeks be like for you and the staff? Well, you know, for us, it, it just it transitioned into the next phase for us. You know, obviously, uh, it was a culmination yesterday, and that was a great celebration as all those letters of intents came in. Uh, but now it's time to really focus and move on to, to the next class of 2015 mm -hmm. and even getting a jump start on identifying uh, the 2016 players. Uh, it, it, that recruiting never stops, you know. Uh, I, one of the guys I used to work for is, uh, you know, Coach Mangino, he used to always say, you know, recruiting's kind of like shaving. If you don't do it every day, you look like a bum. <laughs> and, you know, we, we – I need to it, heed those words. <laughs> <laughs> we, we continue to, uh, to move forward in that regard. But now it, it's, it's time to really focus in on the players that we have here and getting ourselves prepared for spring ball, which, by the way, starts on February the 28th, so it's right around the corner. We'll be doing some professional development of the staff, going out and studying with other guys, and getting some 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 new and fresh ideas that can we, we can add to our attacks to make us better, and and uh, you know, and then we'll start moving into that spring ball phase, and then back into spring recruiting. So uh, we're we're excited about moving to that next phase. Well, Coach, appreciate the time, and uh, need a favor from you when you get back to the office. Can you check? Will never got his NLI in the mail. Uh, yeah, but he's wondering if they I, I know it, he's got about a week to sign. They sent it to Silsby. That. I'm, yeah. I'm right yeah. here. Up there. Yeah, I think I think it's at Uvalde. I think that's where we sent it. It's down there at Uvalde, and I'll yeah. I'll go pick it up. Yeah. But no, that's guys. That's a long drive. You're going to pick that up from you, Valdi. <laughs> hey, as always, I appreciate you guys having us on and uh, just appreciate the job y'all do for Texas A&M. And, and uh, just anytime we can we can be here to talk to to the fans. We love doing it. I appreciate it, Coach. Certainly. And thank thanks you. for the time. Congrats on uh, another tremendous recruiting class. Thanks a lot.